Hello, I am going to read you the story of Anna Strong, a spy during the American Revolution. I love the art in this book, and it's a great story of how a woman helped out during the American Revolution by risking her life and showing a lot of bravery. So we're going to get into it, and here we go. General George Washington was worried about America. He had led the Continental Army to victory in Boston two years ago, but he had lost several battles since. Many of his men were hungry, injured, or sick. The future looked dark for, this, for his young country. One cold night in early 1778, as General Washington huddled in his tent, he wondered how he could turn the war around. Without knowing the British Army's every move, America would surely lose its fight for freedom. As the General's eyelids grew heavy, the answer came to him. America needed spies. George asked his friend, Major Benjamin Talmadge, to form and oversee a new group of spies called the Culper Ring. General Washington had taken the name from Culpeper, Virginia, a place he'd worked as a boy. Major Talmadge devised a special code so spies could pass messages that the British could not read. But even with the code and brave men fighting for the country behind the scenes, America wasn't close to winning the war. The spies who infiltrated British officers' meetings to learn valuable information were sometimes caught and every arrest hurt America's chance for victory. It was time to get help from someone new, someone different. Major Talmadge knew just who. A woman. Anna Smith Strong. Anna lived in Setauket on Long Island near the British headquarters in New York City. It would be a great place for spying. Her relatives were loyalists, supporters of the British, which meant no one would suspect Anna of helping America. Anna was well placed to be a successful spy. She was at ease around other people and attended Br British society parties in New York City while dreaming of the day when America, the land she loved and grew up in, would be free. Love this picture. Check it out. The society party in New York. Looking fabulous. Anna was the last person anyone would dare accuse of being a spy, and when Major Talmadge asked her to become one for her beloved country, she agreed. Anna's husband, Sela, an American soldier, also became a spy. It was a dangerous job for them both, and could end in capture, prison, and even death, but Anna wasn't afraid. She compared it to when she was a girl listening outside her mother's parlor for the latest gossip, only far more important. Anna was proud to be part of this courageous group of patriots, especially since she was the only woman among them. She hoped that would change in time. Major Talmadge warned Anna that the British might shoot a spy on sight, even one in petticoats. Two years earlier, a spy named Nathan Hale had been hanged without a trial for being an American spy, and the risks were just as high now. One of her first missions was to accompany her neighbor and fellow spy, Abraham Woodall, to New York City to gather information on the British Army. Anna pretended to be Abraham's wife, and they made up a story about visiting relatives in the city, which wasn't totally false. Anna's brothers lived in Manhattan, and since they were loyalists, she hoped to learn information about the British from them. She also bought cloth and dry goods, making it seem like she was really there to enjoy the city. Enemy soldiers might have suspected Abraham and detained him for questioning if he was on his own, but with the charming Anna by his side, they made it safely to New York City and back. Anna kept her spy activities well hidden, and the other spies took care to keep her work for the Culper Ring a secret, too. Once a spy named Caleb Brewster was waiting in Anna's garden to have a private meeting with another spy. While waiting, a British officer passed by Caleb's hiding spot. Caleb could have captured or killed the soldier, but he didn't want to draw suspicion to Anna. She would have been questioned by British authorities about the incident since Caleb was in her garden. The incident passed without anyone being discovered. Anna's husband, Sela, wasn't as lucky. 
Shortly after they started spying, he was arrested for covertly sending messages to the enemy. British soldiers locked him up on a prison ship named Jersey, and a fellow spy hurried to bring word to Anna. Other spies told her that the living conditions on the prison ship were horrible. It was overrun with rats and there was little to eat. She would have to act quickly to save Celo's life. Anna couldn't risk revealing herself as a spy, not with her children depending on her, but she also couldn't abandon Sela. She kept making trips to New York City with Abraham, hoping to learn more about the British Army's plans, and on every visit she saw the prison ship bobbing in the harbor. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. Oh my goodness. She knew Sela was there, miserable and waiting for her, counting on her help. Anna also continued helping the other spies pass messages, often written in invisible ink and in Major Talmadge's special code, on a long route across the waters of Long Island Sound. All the while, she was thinking of ways to get onto the heavily guarded prison ship. She couldn't swim there, and she was too small to wear a British soldier's uniform. Suddenly, she had an idea, a simple one. She would bribe her way on board. And the bribe worked. The British soldiers let her on board the Jersey to visit Sela. The meal she brought him on her trips to the city kept him alive until she convinced her loyalist relatives to have him and their children move to a safe house in Connecticut, far from British eyes. One day, British officers came knocking at her door, demanding that Anna let them occupy her family's beautiful manor home as new headquarters. Anna gathered up her favorite belongings. She wouldn't go far, not when she could spy on the British right from her family's land. While the soldiers had their backs turned, she hid her silver and moved into a small cottage. From there, she would make sure the enemy didn't ruin the home her ancestors worked so hard to build. More important, she could eavesdrop and learn what the soldiers were planning. She just have to be careful. Major Talmadge gave Anna the responsibility to signal another spy when there was a message ready to be passed. It would be carried along a complicated route across the Long Island Sound to Connecticut, then on to General Washington's headquarters. At first, Anna thought about using a lantern, but then she had a better idea love this picture. So let me go really slow so you can see it. And then I'll just back up. Isn't that neat? Just love how they show that. Anna hung a dripping black petticoat on her clothesline. The British never suspected a woman's clothing hanging outside meant a message was ready to be delivered to General Washington. Soon Anna figured out more ways she could use her linens to pass messages to the other spies. Handkerchiefs on her clothesline told the location of a boat hidden in a nearby cove. If there were four, Major Talmadge and the others knew to check a certain cove. If there were six, they'd check another. The British officers often strolled past Anna's cottage as she hung out her petticoats. What if they realized what she was doing and locked her up on the jersey? But she couldn't be afraid. America needed her. One night, another spy came to visit Anna with a very important message about where the British Army would be moving next. Anna knew what this meant, a chance for America to get a step ahead of the British and finally start winning the war for their freedom. Now it was up to her to signal to a third spy who would take the message across the Sound to General Washington. Early the next morning, Anna grabbed her laundry basket and hurried outside. She could feel the eyes of the soldiers on her, but she never gave them a reason to suspect her. She hung handkerchiefs and petticoats in neat rows, like she did every day. 
There was nothing she could do now but sit by her window watching the British soldiers and wait. Anna hoped that General Washington would get the message. I think the waiting would be the really, really hard part. It's so hard um, dealing with the uncertain. And he did. Washington used the secrets Anna and the Culper Ring spies passed him to anticipate enemy troops' movements and plan ahead, helping to win the Battle of Yorktown, and eventually, eventually the ultimate victory, independence. When the good news reached Anna, she celebrated with her family. By that time, Sela and their children had returned home. Anna knew that some people were worried about the future of their young nation, but she wasn't afraid. She was glad she'd risked her life for her family and her nation's new freedoms. And President George Washington was glad his spies had trusted the clever Anna Strong. She was just the woman America needed. I love this picture. So the next part um, is pretty neat, and I'll hold it up to the camera, and if you want to pause it so that you can read it a little bit more closely and maybe test out some of the um, spies that the Culper spy ring used, you can do that. Um, so the first thing, I'm just going to hold it up right here. So if you want to pause it, you can. And then I'm going to just scoot it up a little bit so you can see this. And they have numbers, and I'm sure you noticed as the story went through that the numbers meant something. So if you saw 7-11, that meant General George Washington. I'm going to scoot this in so you can get a little better angle. You guys can pause it. Oh, sorry, I know it's hard for it to... There we go. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is um, the recipe for invisible ink. So make sure if you're making this, you get permission from your, your adult. Don't do this without permission. I don't want you to make a mess, but here's the recipe for invisible ink if you want to um, write some codes. And again, you can just pause it. Hopefully you, you were able to get a, a good pause there. And that's it. Um, pretty fun. I love this book and I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.